Yo guys, what is up? It's Teach here coming at you again with another video over on Power World. And in this video, I'm going to show you 21 plus tips that are advanced in order to make your game go smoother and some things that hopefully you didn't know and will help you out a ton in the game. We're gonna go and get started right away. Now, if you don't mind, smack that like button at some point, leave a comment below for the algorithm and then consider subbing to the channel for some more helpful videos. So my first tip for you is pretty simple. It is with the grapple gun that you can do a special thing. So a lot of people have a problem getting encumbered because they'll pick too much up. You can see I have 2,887 carry weight out of 1,300. However, you can still grapple gun and move when you are fully encumbered. You just have to find an item that you can actually go to. Now, trees allow you to grapple to them. So you, even though you can't move at all, you can still grapple to things as long as they are in range of your grapple gun, meaning that your apple guns are really important. And if you have a larger grapple gun, you'll be able to transfer further, obviously, allowing me to move around and kind of get to places much, much easier. So you can leave a tree or something nearby and you can grapple to quite a few things that you might not have realized that you can grapple to. You have to be in the right distance uh that's the one thing that you want to be careful of because you do have to be close to it trees rocks seem to be the ones that actually work the best so you can grapple while you're still encumbered now i don't care about that stone we're gonna go ahead and drop it now next on my list this is probably one of the most useful things in the entire game that people don't really understand what or why or how it works. So in order to actually successfully use this, there is a R command that people don't realize what it does. It's called quick stack. Now, quick stack is actually something that is going to take anything from your entire inventory and immediately drop it into an inventory that already exists. So if I was to take some flour and put it on my inventory, right? All I have to do is hit R and anything that exists on the right side and has exists on the left side will transfer from the left to the right. As soon as you hit R, that flower is going to instantly transfer and anything else in my inventory that could be transferred would do it. So it would take all of those things. I use that in another tip video, but it's still something that no one uses and you definitely need to check it out. Now, tip number three, if you are looking to get access to a ridiculous amount of early game PAL spheres, there is actually a farm build that you can do if you are trying to farm them up and you can go into your PAL deck and inside of the farm, you can actually get a creature that will produce you at an insane rate, not the Vixies. Wow, I just went to the wrong one. Um, but creatures will produce you some crazy stuff. And specifically, you want to keep an eye on a single creature that's going to produce. All right, guys. Yeah, so the Vixies are the things that you want. The Vixies, when you place them inside of a farm, you'll notice they have a farming possibility. They will actually dig up spheres for you so you can get a stupid stupid amount so put a few of them in an actual thing and you'll get a up to i mean i was getting thousands of spheres and you can sell those spheres for a ton of gold or you can just you know use those spheres and put them in your inventory when you're actually trying to get stuff done but pal spheres can be insanely useful when you're uh kind of going around even the basic level ones are really useful throughout the entire game now, the next thing that you kind of want to be aware of, and it's very important that a lot of people forget to do, is how to use the F command on your pals. So what the F command is going to do is whenever I can get a chance to go up and lift a pal, just like this, you can assign them to a specific task. If you don't want them running around base doing random shenanigans, you can literally say, hey, what I want you to do is this specific task right now. And it'll let you know fixed assignment to sphere assembly line. And that's what this specific pal is going to work on until he is done with that specific thing. Even when he's done, he'll sit there and continue to kind of grind those out for you. So using that F command will save you a lot of time if you have a pal that wants to do multiple tasks. Now, next up on our list is the major difference in pals in single versus multitasking. So Pals are all good at individual things. Some have uh, multiple things they're good at and some only have one. So let me tell you the difference and why it's important to know this, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I have working in my base. You can see that I have an Azerobe. Even though the Azerobe is something that is kind of only one specific task, I want it in my base because I don't want it focusing on anything else except for watering. That's very important because yes, there are some pals that you want for being able to do a couple of different things early on, once you get towards the end game, you want pals to do specific tasks. Like I want multiple Azerobes in my base to do nothing but water because I've got a ton of different water functions. So I don't want them to do anything but water the specific mills and things along those lines. And then I might want other tasks like a Tansy because they're really good at doing a couple of different things. This one specifically will plant and it will harvest for me. So it has multiple things that it's good at. 
and I want to be able to use those for those specific tasks. Now, you want to think about the difference in when you want something that only has one capability versus multiple because tansies can do so many different things. They can work a little bit slower because sometimes they'll get squirrely and start doing a whole bunch of different tasks. Whereas your dinos or your, I mean, sorry, dinos, your creatures with one specific task in mind, like these dig toises, will only mine nonstop, which will produce you a ton of the resource you're trying to get. So definitely keep in mind and kind of use it to the best of your advantage to have creatures that can either do one task and multiple and try and feather those out through your entire base. Now, next thing that you're going to want to be aware of, if you actually go to the map, you can see there are a ton of bosses all over the place. Level for these bosses really doesn't matter. As long as you're within about 10 levels of the boss, you can easily defeat it as long as you have the high enough sphere. Now, just to tell you, I defeated this level 30 um, elf alpha drawn. I don't know if you want to call it that the alpha drawn. I defeated this when I was like level 15 because I was able to find a gigasphere. All you need to really do is tank the bosses and get them low enough and then throw a few pal balls at them. It seems as if there's an increased catch rate on them just because they want you to try and get those creatures more often. So you definitely want to consider that as a possibility because a lot of these you can actually do a lot of these without having to think too hard because they're so much bigger. They take a lot of damage and you can kind of just get some really neat pals. So don't be so afraid of them. Definitely do them as soon as you get a chance and you feel comfortable. Now, in order to do those pals, this is my next tip for you. There's something called LOS or line of sight. Line of sight is a very, very effective tool inside of this game due to the fact that it works for you, not really against you very often, but for you. So if I'm going to attack a pal, I want to know if it's a higher level pal, how much damage it's going to do to me. What you want to focus on is line of sight. So you want to put something between you and that pal, for example, a tree like this. That way, when I shoot it, it cannot hit me because I can hide behind this when it tries to launch something at me. Now, some pals will drop an AOE effect. However, most pals only have a line of sight. So if they are actually able to hit you and nothing is in the way, they're going to hit you with their target stuff. But if you put something like a tree between you, you can pretty much dance back and forth between the tree and actually shoot or like in the boss arenas. If you dance behind a pole, you can actually do a ridiculous amount of damage to these things and never get hit for the entire boss fight or creature fight in the just at all. So that's a very useful thing that you should for sure take advantage of. So definitely use that when you get a chance. Now, the next thing, as long as you're, we're talking about fighting and taking care of things, what you want to focus on is actually thinking about something called schematics. Now, schematics can be found from chests inside of the game, and you can get some really powerful loot inside of these schematics. Really, Lim? Why, why, why'd you do that? Um, but those schematics can be very useful, and I'll show you what they can do. These are two old bows. This is a standard old bow that you can just make. And this is one using a schematic. So it has four times the damage, more durability as well, about two and a half times more durability, I guess. Yeah, two and a half times more durability and four times more damage. So if you get some good schematics, definitely make them because it's 100% worth your time. And this old bow is actually better than the crossbow I have in my inventory. I just use the crossbow because I like that it uh, fires a little slower so I can actually work on the other menus as well. So definitely pick up schematics. They're very important. Now, next up on our list is the concept of automation. If you haven't seen some of my automation videos, you need to actually work on automating your base to the best of your ability. The reason that I talked earlier about the multiple tasks, I have two watering creatures and the rest of them are picking, gathering, and then planting. Now, this entire section of my base right here automatically drops everything into this. And I have almost 3000 red berries, so they're constantly automating feeding. So I don't even have to think about feeding my pals. It is automatically done for me. Other things that you can automate, for example, is the stone gathering by having a few dig toises or stone specific creatures. And then also automating your wood gathering by having something that gathers wood really quickly. Now, that is, those are some of the big things you wanna mod, uh, like just as much as you can. And you can even, if you haven't seen my video on this, but how to actually automate the process of making paldium, you can get a whole bunch of stone over there and just constantly have your water creatures make it. There's another 2000 paldium that I can just pick up and kind of move around with if I really wanted to. And you can just constantly have things being cranked out. So that is one good thing that you can do in order to do this. And if you see your pals slacking off, just back to one of our earlier tips. Hey, I want you making these spheres. You know your job. OK, well, apparently he doesn't like that he's doing right. So we're going to go ahead and tell them to do it again. I don't know. Sometimes they get funky, but that is how you do that. So automate as much as you can. Now, 
The next thing that's a really important tip, if you haven't seen my video on this one, it's also a very good thing, is if you have a spare base. So I have the capability to place three bases on my map. However, I only ever place down two. The reason is, is if you place a base down, you can instantly transfer from that little area. And by base, what I mean is you place down one of these guys, a PAL box, right? And then if I go to my C menu on the PAL box, if I'm stuck somewhere over here and I have a spare base, I can plop down a PAL box, build it, and then use it to teleport back to my base. And then what I would immediately do is hold V on it, dismantle that base, and I still always have that. So I literally give myself the ability to teleport from anywhere on the map at any point in time. It's a very useful thing that will save you a ridiculous amount of time. Now, the next tip on our list is incubation speeds. If you haven't been paying attention to them, it's very, very, very important. Certain creatures will do better just by being in a room with no heat, no cool. Like these right here, common eggs, and verdant eggs. Seems just a little cold, so if we heat them up just a touch, they would actually increase their speed. Now, no matter how many fires you place around these guys, one fire will give you an incubation speed bonus of 50% for scorching eggs. And then if you actually get a heater in the late game, the electric heaters, you'll kind of towards the very end of this game, you can kind of get these. Uh, there's some electric heater and electric coolers. These will increase your speeds by up to 100%, making it two times as fast, literally saving you two times the effort to raise more eggs, which is one of the cooler parts of this game because you can actually do some really neat stuff with it. So next on my list, and this is a very, very important one, and people don't pay attention to it. There are armors that you don't unlock and you have to get schematics for. So for example, see how I don't have anything on my head at all? I actually have to unlock a schematic in order to wear something on my head. You'll notice that I can get a feathered hairband schematic. And if I go ahead and place that in my inventory, I can go ahead and craft that at any bench that's capable of doing it. So this bench, for example, I can see that I can actually make my feathered hairband and I can go ahead and craft it and then use that. Now that's going to give me automatic um, resources and ability to use that in order to get extra armor for my character. So you definitely want to take advantage of that. And that's something that people don't really ever look at. You want to be able to get that, but you can only get it from schematics. Same thing with accessories, thermal underwear, and gliders. So you can actually place gliders in your inventory as well. So notice how this one accessory that raises cold resistance and an accessory that raises defense as well. So these are accessories that you don't think about. And then you want to pay attention to your specific body armor because it will make a massive difference whether you have cold resistant, heat resistant. So having a spare in your inventory to hot swap for cold or hot is a very good thing, especially end game when you go into the colder and hotter zones of the map. Now, Next thing on my list, I am not currently near one, but on your map, there are black market dealers. Those black market dealers can give you some insanely useful creatures. They will give you sometimes things that you have in your inventory. However, often they will have rare creatures for higher values. Now you can find them just by exploring and they look really goofy. I have found one a few times in playthroughs. I don't, I think they're all the same in the playthroughs. You can find one near the small settlement. You can find one near the fort ruins as well. If you go kind of like right around there, there's almost always one uh, in the fort ruins in black market dealers are something that you definitely want to keep an eye out for because they'll have tames that are almost impossible to get in the game. Now, the next tip on our list is to store cakes automatically, right? Because cake is a very valuable thing because it is needed in order to actually breed pals. Now, cake also has a ridiculously fast cooldown timer as well. So what you want to do is you want to do two things. One, either do not pick it up. If you leave it here, it will stand good forever. So it'll just sit there and never spoil. And then if you bring it over to the box inside of this guy over here, it'll actually have an infinite spoil time as well. You can see right here, it's got a 20 minute cooldown timer as long as it's not in this box. But as soon as you put it into your breeding farm, that spoil timer stalls and it will stay good forever. So never put it in your fridge or something like that. You want to constantly have your cake either in one or two of those two things because it'll prevent it from spoiling. So if you didn't know that already, now you do that putting things uh, in this well, I guess it's only cake that you can actually put in there, but you see the point. And then you are leaving them where you crafted them. It will prevent them from spoiling. And that's a huge difference because a lot of these things spoil incredibly quickly. So just leave them until you're ready to use them. And there's a big, big hint until you get fridges late game. Now, next thing on my list. Spoils infinite. And, and this is kind of like just a reminder, right? Anything you make has a spoil timer inside of this guy right here. So bread, for example. If I was to go in my inventory, I use a lot of bread because I can make a lot of flour. 
it spoils at 14 minutes and 11 seconds, and then eggs at a little bit faster at around seven minutes. So if I was to leave whatever I wanted, if I had a lamb doll meat, for example, and I started that production right, it's gonna have a 20 minute cooldown timer. But if my creature, or if I never pick it off of this um, actual thing, the lamb doll kebab, it'll just sit there and it will never spoil. So leaving things on there is a little bit of a cheat in order to actually keep your food good for a long time. Now, the next thing on our list is another really valuable one that people kind of early game remember, but forget about late game. And this is enhancing both your individual stats, looking for lift monk energies. This increases your capture power, which is going to make a big difference every single time you throw a sphere. Now, the next thing is enhancing your pals. You can enhance your pals abilities quite significantly, and you can see that I've got a Fox Barks at level 31 with an 18% bonus attack, which is a huge difference because of the amount of damage Fox Sparks can do. This is a really, really, really valuable tame. Now, also you can do things like increasing their max HP, which can be useful if you're gonna be flying around. This one's got 2,600 health, or increase their work speed, which is gonna make them actually harvest things faster for you. And all you have to do is click yes to the enhance option, and that's gonna be a big game changer for you, and it's gonna save you a lot of time increasing anything from attack to that work speed will be a very useful thing for you. So definitely keep that on your list of things to do, especially if you have some more tanky dinos or creatures and uh, they will actually work, do your work for you. Sorry, I play a lot of arc. That's why I say dinos pretty often. Now, next thing on our list is in order to kind of work this a lot better and get your better creatures overall, you can actually start the breeding process with your creatures. Now in my party, what you're gonna notice is I have certain uh, creatures in here, right? Each one of your creatures usually has some sort of ability on it. In order to check the abilities, if you hover over the top of them, you can see they have passive skills. This one is abnormal, right? This one right here is a dainty eater. Now, some of these are cowards, which is a bad one in a heated body. You'll notice that some of them have legendary traits like logging foreman, or if I scroll over here, I'm sure I'll find a few other ones. Artisan, there are special talents that some of these guys have, like Workaholic. These are really good statistics. Now, if I was to actually go into this, you can see that Workaholic means that this guy's sand drops 15% slower, and that's an incredibly useful thing. You can actually breed these characteristics and combine them into making really powerful eggs. I'll show you what I mean by that, because I just got a Pen King that is incredibly powerful because I bred two really good tames together. And I think this is the one. Nope, that's not it. I had a pen king. I don't know where it is right now, but apparently it's somewhere not in here. Maybe it's this guy. Nope, I have another pen king somewhere. So, um, but anyways, you can breed them and get some really good stats because it's going to combine the two parent stats. And if you can get some stats that are uh, good, you can keep getting more and more good stats on your creatures. And it's going to save you a lot of time. And they're going to be overall just better teams because small differences make a big difference inside of this game. So next up on our list after talking about that is automating your eating with the sack. I know that sounds weird to say, but if you go into your key items, you can actually see that I have a feed bag. Now the average feed bag unlocks two slots in my inventory. This is not something that has any weight to it. We can just passively carry it around whether you're whether you stay alive or not. It's going to passively stay on my body and it's gonna be allowing me to automatically eat food so I never need to think about it and I never even need to worry about feeding my party because they will automatically eat out of it when I kind of throw them out. And it's gonna make it that just small thing automating your life just a little bit easier. So it makes a big difference. Now, this is my last tip for you. I know I've given you way more than the 21 kind of little bonus tips, but still, this is an important one. Towards the end of the game, it can be a grind in order to level. You can see I need 116,000 experience in order to level up to level 36. However, this can be done very quickly because the XP for catching tames is the only thing that kind of changes in this game. In order to catch your pals, that is the best way to level up in the entire game. You get an XP bonus catching up to 10 individual pals. And at each level, it gets more and more and more. So right now I get 5,000 experience per tame that I catch. Now that means that I have to catch 20 new tames inside that 10 minute tame ratio, and I would go to the next level. 
at level one, it's only like 100, but the only way to level up effectively throughout this entire game is to catch more pals. The game wants to push you to do that and it becomes harder and harder, but go occasionally out on a pal catching spree and that is the best way to level in pal world. So I know that is a lot of tips and hopefully it's some stuff that helps you. Maybe you knew some of it, maybe you didn't. And hopefully all of this is useful, to, uh, just useful stuff. Now, my last thing, if you're still watching this, the last thing that I'll say, this is kind of a plug, kind of, but not really. Playing on a solo player server is much more difficult than playing on a rented server. The reason I say this is because Pal World is a game where things need to happen passively. If you're playing a solo player server, things don't happen when you log off because the game essentially freezes. If you're playing on a rented server like I am, I'm playing on this rented server through my company, G Portal. By the way, if you look in the link below, it's going to save you 10% off G Portal servers. And uh, it ends up being like three or four dollars a month for a rented server for you and four friends. Or if you want to go up to 32 people, you can go as high as that as well. Um, but things happen faster because I'm able to kind of log off and say, hey, I want you to make the maximum number of stone and I'll come back on to 9,999 stone. So it's going to save you a lot of time just because having that extra time, it's much easier to play on a server official or rented unofficial. It's up to you, but definitely consider doing that because you log off and things will be made when you get back on instead of having to wait for it in game. So anyways, hopefully this video helps you out. And if you don't mind, smash that like button, leave a comment below for the algorithm, and then consider subbing to the channel. All right, teach. Ah.